Razavani for IFO TV in association with MTK Global. With me on Zoom today, my man, Mr. Ashley. Well, let me say that again. Retired Mr. Ashley Theophane. Ash, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Just relaxing, you know, um, preparing to be a coach, you know, life after it and all of that. So it's all good. Yeah, how's before I, we even talk anything about boxing, but how's the family and everybody? I know last time I spoke to you was last year, uh, end of November, but since then we're we're still in a lockdown. We're still living yeah. behind bars, it seems like, but yeah. how's everyone? Everyone's safe and well? You everyone, yeah, I'm blessed that my family's cool. So, you know, we're still there just getting through these times and hopefully we will be free soon. So who knows? No, absolutely. So Ash, what's, what's going on? Uh, officially retired now not looking to fight anymore and get punched in the face. Um, yeah. I know you were looking to open a gym, but obviously because of COVID and, and businesses right. clo closing, etc., you haven't had the opportunity to finalise that. But any updates yeah. on that? Um, so basically, um, I, I spoke, uh, the gym is there, you know, the ring is coming soon. So we are still preparing to do what we are doing. So when we reopen, then like we can like the gym will be there. So um the gym, the gym is still at work. We're still doing the work on the gym and um it's gonna be good to go. So um it's great. So I just spoke to a guy this last night. He wants us to work with the NHS doing some stuff there. Um so um yeah, it's great, man. It's all it's all full full steam ahead. I know I've seen you in the park on the pad with with kids yeah. and training mm -hmm. kids, but is that the next stage for you now, coaching and, and training? Um, you know, I I don't mind to kind of train them. It keeps me active. It keeps me active. So, I, you know, I enjoy to work with the kids who try in the box. But also I might get my pro, my pro license as well. Because you never know, I might, I might, you know what I'm saying, well, I'm a part of something to help some pros, you know. um, Because nowadays, with that, go into America but they go into America kind of safe with their promoter so for me uh, for me it's not kind of the same way the way that a few of us did it you got Khan um, you got guys that based themselves out there and trained out there like with an American coach it's a total it's not the same as going there for a fight when you've done camp there then you go over there like for a fight like going over there and training with American guys um spa and then it's, it's not the same as being here so um i would like to see more guys um do it because i saw there was a thing online the other day about in the last 20 years the pros the british pros that have fought over there like they fought how much they fought and how much they won i think i'm 12 and 5 or some shit like that khan has fought a lot over there I think James the girl, he fought a lot over there. I think James did as well. So, but the thing was, there's not a lot of us that fight over there. And if we do fight, we fight there once or twice and then we might lose or whatever it is. So um, it's a shame that not enough Brits believe in their self to go over there and base their self and, um, and you know, get fights. So I actually am world champion. He asked me about doing a camp over there and stuff. And um, I think he done one or two like camps there, but um, it didn't work out. And then he came back. He still became a world champion, but um, it's something. It's something about us that we go over there, and a lot of us just can't like do it there. Swift. I don't know what it is. Obviously, Vidal Riley is another one that's out there at the yeah. moment. Um, and yeah. when I spoke to Vidal, I said, "Didn't you want to come here fight for the English title or the Southern Area title, and then move yeah. to?" British and European Commonwealth level didn't and he said he didn't want to follow the traditional route he goes he wanted to do things my way and do and come out of my comfort zone yeah well the way Vidal if you do that from when you go over there you jump over like the British champion here the Commonwealth champion the Europe I'm the I'm European champion because straight away when you get fights over there like you get world ranked like straight to win and you might just get a world title shot straight without doing all of this stuff over here. Like when I was world number, I beat the world number three, then I fought for the British. So I thought I beat the world number three in the USA. Then I got, and then I fought for the British here and won it here. So it was the kind of same, same way. So I like over there, 
it's a shame that like he has a fight and then he can't fight because he gets injured. So that's been a shame. But I do respect the way that Vidal's gone about it. It's just a shame that he hasn't fights because he's always got like this some something that goes wrong in camp or whatever. Um, Ash, I just want to touch on uh, a man that you know very well, unfortunately, and Sandy passed away in Stan Hoffman um, not long ago, a, a week or so yeah. ago. Um, the man that gave you his debut in, in, in America. I just wanted you to share a few thoughts on that. Yeah, very sad when I found out that he passed. Um, I think it was 2008 that I had my first fight in the USA. He spotted me when I was in camp with um, Dimitri Salita because he had a camp in Cat Cat Skills. And me and Dimitri, we went up there, I think, for like a month. And he used to come and watch, watch us spar. So when he used to watch us spar, he said that he believed I could be a world champion. He said that he had worked with like so many world champions. And um, so I was like, cool. And then so I came back to England. And then he said, yeah, that I want to get you a fight and whatever it is. And then I flew over there and then he got me my first fight in the USA. So, so it was, um, yeah, it was, I mean, like for someone that's and sometimes I, I like about, is it there? There's a lot of us Brits that can't get a break here. But when we go over to the USA, like they see something in us that for what everything it is that the Brits don't see it in and I say it goes for acting mu mu music it's just kind of weird that um it happens too often so it's sad that he passed but he's touched so many lives so he lives on like through us I also also saw you share a picture on your Instagram with uh Liam Spinks who also sadly oh. passed away um Created yeah. a legacy, obviously, by beating Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Um, but how how has Leon, someone like Leon, influenced your career? Oh no, someone like Leon, he he's like a guy. See, he beat Muhammad Ali, and what he done, like many thought, would would never be done. So um, you know, I've I've met him like a few times in America. Like he's always he's always been cool. Um, his family, you know, the Sphinx. Corey, Michael, and Leon, I don't think there's a family that have ever done what they've done. You know, the son was, you know, so they have again touched the world in our sport. They have touched our sport and it may not be done again. From amateurs to pro, that's what their family done. Um, oh, well, we wish, we send our regards to the, obviously both. Um, mm. Leon and obviously Stan's family and, and may yeah. they rest in peace. Um, Ash Boxing is back um, in the UK. Um, kicks off with Warrington this weekend. Um, well, tonight. Um, obviously, we've got jam pack. Eddie Hearn's put a jam pack scheduled together. Also, Frank Warren's put a jam pack scheduled together as well, announcing a couple of shows with Brampton Herring, uh, which is in a couple of weeks as well. Um, your friend returns next week in America, AB, Adrian Broner, about okay. Billy. Um, okay. how would you sum up AB like he was on the verge of people saying the next Floyd Mayweather and yeah. it seems like he, he he struggled to live the life of an athlete and a boxer drinking uh, eating overweight and not staying active um, he's coming back into boxing obviously he hasn't retired I know he's he's joked about it in the past so I'm, I'm retired but is he coming back just for money now who knows? Because with AB, you have to think, you have to look at the four guys that he's lost to, or like they're all great guys. So um, he hasn't lost to no bums or anything. He's lost to name guys. And um, it's just he's been a four-weight world champion. It's but it's at the same time, he's older now, and there's got a next crop of these younger guys. So um, it just kind of depends what he wants and who. Interest, and he's saying he's going to be a world champ again. So, um, I don't know, I don't know what more he has left in, and so time will tell. We'll have to, but he seems like he's been in camp, he's been putting in the work. So, um, but it's just to go out there and you got to let your hand, hands go in it. But, um, 
yeah, you, you never know, man. That's, that's what I'm saying. The sport is more than just being in shape. It's your mind and you got to actually go out there and produce it like in the ring. So we're going to have to wait and see till next next week. You know, um, if like A, B is reborn. Uh, Ash, the most talked about division at the moment, aside from <clears throat> the potential Joshua Fury fight is the lightweight yeah. division. They, they call yeah. the four kings, Teofimo Lopez, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, and um, I'm forgetting the third one. Devin Haney, my bad. Devin yeah, Haney. Yeah. So, in boxing over the last 10, 15 years, we've seen a norm where the best are not fighting the best. Promoters yeah. are always getting in the way. Uh, managers are getting in the way. Politics, TV networks are getting in the way. Yeah. And all of these fighters, these four kings are all young. 22, 23, 24 years old. Teofimo is regarded as the undisputed champion of the lightweight division at the moment. But is it important that they fight each other? And it, it doesn't make a difference if they lose. You know, you can go and do, uh, you know, Marquez Pacquiao fought each other four times. Yeah. Uh, Barrera Morales. So is it important for them to fight for the sake of their legacy? Or do you feel like money has just taken over? These guys are happy fighting once, making the big millions and then taking a year out and then fighting again. Uh, what I would say for those four guys, I think all those guys, if they fight each other, those would be some great fights which would last for the Kings that we know from the 80s. So um, I think that I hope that these guys... Sure. I, I mean, if you lose to one guy, you might beat the other guy. But um, I don't really blame it on... I think that they would fight. I think it's the teams behind them. So I think... A, a, a lot of us, we would fight, but sometimes your team is saying no to wait. You've got to make it wait to build up a bit. So I, I don't really put it down on, on those four guys because sometimes the promoters, they don't want to make the fight. You know what I mean? They want to do whatever they like. They were to do. So um, I think it's a shame, but those guys are four young guys. They all can bang. they got skills, speed. So it would be a shame if they didn't all fight each other, but man, because those are some great, great fights that we, you know, in the next, like, from now till in the next five to ten years, like, they could be having fights. So it would be a shame if we never got to see those fights. Absolutely. I saw an interview where Teofimo Lopez said, uh, I think it was on one of the American channels, um, he said you were, in fact, one of his toughest spars that he's ever had. Yeah. What do you remember about it? He said most challenging, most oh, challenging. Cha challenging spar. I was the most challenging. Well, I sparred him. I think I sparred him three times in the space of a week. And then I sparred death in the week after that. So um, I remember I met him and his dad at a Mayweather promotion show. And his dad came up to me saying, ah, oh, that we would like to help, help you with um, the AB fight. He said, his son um, was going to be a star. You know? So this is five years ago. This is exactly five years ago. And um, he was saying, yeah, his son is going to be a... So I just sat there and I was just like, all right, cool. He, like, he's just chatting. But that's why I give them respect. His, his dad spoke it. His dad believed in him. And they've gone on to do everything that his dad said to me like five years ago. So I think we sparred. It was next week that I said, cool, that we will spar. Like he was cool at the time, so that's why for him he's saying it was it wasn't easy because I was doing five minute rounds, and um he it was like he would start off good, but then I would grind I would grind down in it because I was older than me, I was more in my peak peak then, and he was just start starting out. So for me, when years have gone by, and then I'm seeing I'm I'm seeing him, he's KOing all these guys. I'm like shit, like where did this power come from? But again. He was a young man at the time when I sparred him. And a lot can change from now till like four years time or three years time when you're a young boy. So it was good. Like it was good. It was, it's great. To, it's great that I've sparred a lot of these guys and I've been around them. So to see them shine now, it's good. So, you know, it's all good, man. It's love. With Tia being now the undisputed lightweight champion, yeah. would you say he is the number one of the division? By default. By default, he beat the man in it, Loma. He beat the man, so he, he is the man now. But um, you know, he's he's still 
it would be a shame if he didn't fight Javon A, didn't fight Devin, Ryan. Um, so it, it, it's just annoying that I think Ryan and Dev were supposed to fight like because the fight with Luke, whoever won that fight wasn't supposed to fight Dev, but now they're not fighting Dev for whatever thing it is. Then Dev's supposed to be the next one to fight Tio because he's got the belt as well. So it's it's a shame that it's part of fights. And um, it's, it's a shame that there's so many belts now. So you can call yourself a champion and you know, they, they um, create belts, like, for you. So I think that harms the sport because we want to see the best fight the best. You know what I mean? But no one wants to lose. And I don't think none of them have lost yet. So them guys, they don't want to take that risk unless they're getting a very career high payday. You know what I mean? I've heard, like, 10 million is whatever it is, isn't it? So that's why I saw her. And he must have said, yeah, you can get your 10 mil um, thing, but get it from Bob because you ain't getting it from me. <laughs> Um, I think Hernie was saying that about Tio, saying, yeah, if you want the 10 million, that's cool, but you get it from Bob, you're not getting it from me. So, by the same time, they think they're worth whatever it is, and our careers are short, so they got uh, they got us, you know, you got to get paid, in it? Because we've seen the older generation, they may have took, they took whatever they got, and a lot of them have turned out to be broke, so... I'm glad that these younger guys, they got their head more screwed, screwed on and they want to be paid what they feel is worth than the older guys. They may have just, just took whatever they got. So I think the younger guys are more smarter nowadays because they're thinking, I'm not going to be like these old champions who are broke now and whatever. So guys, you can look at you. You could think, yeah, fight each other. And then they might think, yeah, we'll fight, but I want to get paid, though. So it, it is what it is, isn't it? No, absolutely. Uh, Ash, I'll end on this. Um, we had a lot yeah. of back and forth this week be between Deontay Wilder and his um, mm -hmm. ex-trainer, if I may call him that, Mark Breland. Um, we obviously saw Wilder take that defeat last week to Tyson Fury, and Wilder came up for many reasons on why he thought he lost the fight. I think the first excuse was bicep, then the suit was the issue. Um, then someone spiked his water. Now, for those who know Mark Breland, he's um, he's a very behind the scenes type of guy. He, you don't really see him do interviews doing fight. He's, quiet. he's a yeah. very very quiet guy. Um, he, who, who had a great career himself. Now he's done a, he had a greater career than the man he trains. He was he's done an yeah, because he was the man, and then the pro. He was like a two time world champ. So in a sense, he had a better career than the man. He, he, he was co coached too, if you want to be real. He's then done an interview uh, with Spencer Fear yeah. on, um, on The Fight is Right, uh, where he's spoken out for the first time now. Yeah. Some people have turned out and said, look, he shouldn't have spoken out, he should have stayed quiet. Obviously, Deontay Wilder's come back out now and said, oh, now it makes sense. Mark was jealous of me all this time. But uh, it's turned very, very sour. But what have you made of all of it? It's Wilder's sport. Because at the end of the day, he shouldn't have made up no excuse. Just take the L, go back to the gym, train, and then have the third fight. That's what he should have, should have done. At the end of the day, like Mark had his back. You're, if you feel a certain way, you don't have to go out there and say it. Because then you, you're making this excuse, like that excuse. Just take the loss. Just take the L and come back. But you, this, this man who... People who know him know he's mad cool. I remember when I was at Gleason's gym, he used to train with some guy that I used to spar all the time. So he was always there. But then he had to leave that guy in the end because he was training um what um beyond Deontay. So um like I've been around him, like I've I've sparred his guys, like he's mad cool, he's mad chill. And um he was quiet for so long. That's what I'm saying. He took all the abuse. There's only so much abuse that you can take. So I feel that he had to get his his voice out there and what he thinks. And um, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm more on his side because I think that Dion A, he should have just taken his loss and, and that that is, and he should have just come back for um, the third fight and just tried to get the win there. So he started it. Mark just retaliated. He took so much abuse. He was like, I'm going to say have my I'm going to have my word now and just, you know what I mean, just say that. So it's a shame that it's come to that. 
because they shared so many good times together. And he was with him throughout the start and he built him up to where he was world champion. You lost, just take the loss and come back. And so it's a shame that it had to end the way that it's ended. Marx also mentioned that Deontay doesn't have a jab. Uh, he'll yeah. never beat Fury again. He doesn't punch yeah. the heavy bag. He doesn't do any skipping. He just constantly relies on this one punch power. Uh, he also then said, I, I don't speak to him personally. There's too many new people around. I don't even have his number. Um, what's Deontay Wilder got left now? Obviously, the belts are tied up with Fury AJ. It looks yeah. like that fight's going to take place next. They're going to have yeah. a two-fight deal. Yeah. Usyk's in the background wanted, wants to fight the mandatory. Yeah. So that he, could, next. he could potentially be next. But where does, what does Deontay Wilder have left? And what do you think his next move is? Charles Martin, Andy Ruiz? Yeah, he, he could. I think Ruiz is a good fight, but it's a risky fight. Because if, if he's best, be able to beat um, Deontay, Deontay. So Deontay, as you said, relies too much on the one punch. And um, that has a shame. You got so far, but you were so powerful, you didn't hone your other skills. So now, I, I as Mark said, I don't know where he goes because he didn't take the first fight. So now he's out. So who, like he's in the like, who needs you club now? Like, why do I need to fight you? So unless the Darth BC says he has to fight next, I think he's just kind of stuck on the outside, which is a shame. But that's that, like, that is the sport. Like, you know what I mean? Would you still like to see a potential Joshua Wilder or a Dylan White Wilder? Wouldn't it still be a No, it is. It is. It's weird, because back in the 90s, all of the big guys, they used to fight each other. So everyone, you would lose, then you would fight this guy, you might win. This generation, it just seems that they're not the kind of same where they all don't fight each other. You know what I mean? So um, I think everyone's a brand nowadays. So because everyone's a brand, you don't want to take too many L's because you won't get the deals outside the ring and whatever it is. And you know what I mean? And because, yeah, they're on the front, front, front page as well as every man now. So I think that's how, as we spoke, that's why a lot of the guys, they don't fight each other because it's not like back in the day that you might have eight losses, but you're still an all-time great. Nowadays, guys are, like, guys are scared to lose one or two, let alone like lose eight because some of the greats, have lost six fights, have lost eight fights. They don't give a fuck. They're still great. But this generation, it just seems that they don't want to fight each other unless they don't get this cash that they want. So, yeah, man, it's... Because I prefer to watch the old the old than they fights. Because everyone just fought everyone. But nowadays, it's just not the same, in it? You know, it's just not the same. It's sad. No. Absolutely. Okay, Ash, thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time today, my man. Uh, hopefully, when we, when the world goes to bit, goes back to a bit of normality, we'll uh, hopefully come by to the gym and check out your gym. And do okay, a bit okay. Of the check your boxing everyone. club. Absolutely, and hopefully pick up. Southall a Southall was going to open up in Southall first. Southall, two thousand and twenty-one. Treasure Boxing Club. Absolutely. Take care. Stay well. Stay safe, and we'll speak soon. All right. Your Pain, IFL TV. Thank you very much.